the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the signing of debt restructuring agreements are all set to go ahead according to cabinet discussions. A second round of discussions with ISP holders to come underway this week. The Colombo Stock Exchange ends mixed today as the ASPI gains and the S&P SL20 records losses. And the Thambapavini wind farm is up for grabs through competitive bidding. From Studio 24, here's Sina Mayadune. Good evening and thank you for joining us on the Nile Business Report. Cabinet spokesperson Minister Bandula Gunawardena said the Cabinet of Ministers has approved the signing of debt restructuring agreements with Paris Club and other stakeholders. Speaking during the Cabinet press briefing held today, Minister Bandula Gunawardena said the relevant agreements will be signed by tomorrow. A Sri Lankan delegation comprising the Secretary of the Finance Ministry, State Ministers and other relevant officials have left for France for the discussions with the Paris Club group of major creditor countries. Furthermore, the cabinet spokesman said that President Ranil Vikramasinghe assured during the cabinet meeting that detailed information regarding all the agreements will be signed in this manner will be submitted to the parliament. He said that additionally, the president also mentioned this good news will be communicated to all the people of the country in the president's address to the nation. Minister Gunavardhan also expressed that he cannot mention the exact time frame regarding the matter since both the negotiations with bilateral creditors and commercial creditors are still underway. According to reports, Sri Lanka is planning a second round of talks with sovereign bondholders later this week. Investors in a steering committee representing key bondholders have halted trading and are in restricted period, indicating a new round of direct talks. Sri Lanka is attempting to restructure $12.5 billion of sovereign bonds and about $1.7 billion of past due interest following the declaration of an external default in 2022. Private investors are seeking some so-called macro-linked bonds whose final haircut is linked to dollar GDP as well as some standard or plain vanilla bonds with an upfront haircut. This style of bonds have not been used in sovereign restructurings before. In the latest round of talks, more plain vanilla bonds may be discussed. The ISB holders have proposed a 28% haircut and a 1.8% consent fee. The macro-linked bonds would have principal restated up to 92% of the original, depending on the evolution of gross domestic product. Three months after the government announced plans to revamp the World War II era, Hungaragora Air Base is an international airport. Sri Lanka's cabinet ministers have approved a proposal to develop it into a fully pledged airport. The Government Information Department said that a joint proposal by President Ranil Vikramasinghe in his capacity as Minister of Defence and Minister of Ports, Shipping and Aviation Nimal Siripala de Silva to make preparations to develop Hingaragora Airport as a complete airport. According to the statement, the purported preparations will be based on the recommendations made by a committee comprising representatives of the Sri Lanka Air Force, the Sri Lanka Civil Aviation Authority, Airports and Aviation Company and the Road Development Authority. The committee was appointed to formulate a master plan for the airport and related tasks. The World Bank's Board of Executive Directors has approved $150 million in financing for Sri Lanka to improve the quality and utilization of its primary healthcare services. The newly approved Sri Lanka primary healthcare system enhancing project will improve quality of care and increase the use of primary medical care institutions which provide essential health services to local communities. Capacity challenges and absence of a formal referral mechanism have led to the underutilization of primary healthcare facilities and overcrowding in tertiary care facilities in Sri Lanka. The previous World Bank supported primary healthcare system strengthening project had already enhanced 550 primary medical care institutions with essential equipment, medicines, health workers, and basic laboratory testing facilities. The new project will scale up these efforts to cover 100% of primary medical care institutions across all districts of Sri Lanka, expanding to over 1,000 facilities with a more comprehensive service package and improved quality of care. Non-communicable diseases such as hypertension 
hypertension, diabetes and cervical cancer are the leading cause of mortality and morbidity in Sri Lanka, accounting for 80% of deaths. This project is designed around these evolving health priorities, helping invest in preventative care and promoting primary care facilities as the first point of care. Sri Lanka's state-run National Water Supply and Drainage Board has made a profit of 5.2 billion rupees in the year to December 2023 after a tariff increase despite not getting money for 25% of its water it pumps out. A finance ministry report said total revenues went up to 61.8 billion rupees in 2023 from 35.4 billion rupees. Water revenue surged to 58.5 billion rupees from 33.1 billion rupees. Cost of sales also went up to 32.8 billion rupees from 23.14 billion rupees, helping boost gross profits from 12.3 billion rupees to 29 billion rupees. Finance costs surged to 14.9 billion rupees from 3.9 billion rupees. NSWD reported net profits of 5.2 billion rupees for the year against a loss of 2.7 billion rupees a year earlier. The Treasury had given 28 billion rupees from taxpayer money to settle loans. The first ever DigiEcon Global Investment Summit 2024 will be held today at the Cinnamon Grand under the patronage of President Ranil Vikramasinghe, marking a significant milestone in the country's digital transformation journey. DEGIS 2024 is a flagship initiative of the DigiEcon Sri Lanka 2030 program, which aims to accelerate the national digital economy. If you are looking at fast growth, then certainly the digital economy and the whole innovation is uh, one system that we have to promote. We started with tourism and agriculture modernization. This is another fast-growing sector that have been identified. The summit is organized by the government of Sri Lanka and coordinated by the Technology Ministry and State Minister Kanaka Hera. The event underscores the country's commitment to harnessing digital innovation for economic growth. The World Bank Group, a strategic partner alongside global giants such as United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, United States Agency for International Development, the Gates Foundation, the International Finance Corporation, MasterCard, Huawei and Microsoft has joined forces for this significant event. State Minister Kanaka Herat said the summit aligns closely with the objectives outlined in the National Digital Strategy 2030. It provides a unique platform to showcase Sri Lanka's dynamic tech ecosystem to international investors. Finance Minister Shahan Seymasinghe will be speaking at the OPEC Fund Development Forum today in Vienna, Austria. The forum will be joined by 125 partner countries, multilateral development banks, global development institutions and prominent private sector players to exchange insights and drive concrete action under the overreaching theme of driving resilience and equity, in line with Sri Lanka's commitment to South Corporation. Let's take a short commercial break. This is an Ali Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. The Colombo Stock Exchange is in a mix today as the ASPI gained while the S&P SL20 index fell at market close. For an update, let's connect with Brendan Fernando from SC Securities. Yes. The oil share price index closed at 12,273 with a one-point increase and the S&P SL20 index closed at 3,633 with a decline of one point. The turnover was recorded at 3.93 billion rupees with a share volume of 67 million. The top four gainers were Blue Diamond Jewelries, SMB Leasing, Tess Agro and Senkadagala Finance. Commercial Bank, John Keels Holdings and HMB recorded the highest turnover during today's session. Today, we were able to observe several crossings of which the Commercial Bank, Agrapatana and Halis showed the highest turnover at 2.7 billion, 49.9 million and 41.6 million respectively. And with the changes in indices and concern around prime lending rates, the market seemed to be reacting accordingly. For an analysis, here's Zaima Jihan from First Capital Holdings. 
As of 20th June, AWPR continued its downward trajectory, declining to 9.09%, one of the lowest levels in recent times. However, AWLR was at 13.14% by the end of April. AWLR is uh, basically the average weighted lending rate charged on loans to all types of borrowers with varying levels of credit worthiness, unlike the AWPR, uh, which is a prime rate charged on the most uh, credit worthy customers like corporations. Uh, so the sizable spread between these two rates has impacted the private sector credit growth. Uh, on the private sector credit side, there has been only a marginal increase of 11 billion during the first four months of uh, 2024 with uh, demand for credit being insufficient. We anticipate a 7.5% rise in private sector credit uh, during 2024, which should uh, typically be an increase of about 552 billion rupees. Ideally, the spread between AWPR and AWLR has to narrow down uh, with AWLR nearing the 9% level of AWPR. So with this, uh, during the second half of this year, we believe uh, demand for credit will uh, show improvement while uh, election campaigns and improving business activities will also uh, further induce demand. In terms of auctions, uh, LKR 160 billion is expected to be raised by uh, CBSL at the weekly T-bill auction scheduled for tomorrow, while a treasury bond auction is announced for 27th June raising uh, LKR 75 billion from 2028 and 2033 maturities. Gold prices fell in Asian trade today, sticking to a tight trading range in the low $2,300 as recent strength in the dollar and anticipation of key inflation data kept traders averse to the yellow metal. Spot gold fell 0.4% to $2,325.56 an ounce, while gold futures fell 0.3% to $2,337.35 an ounce. Brent crude fell today while investors awaited U.S. inflation data later this week, but prices held above $85 level after the previous session's gains on escalating geopolitical tensions and hopes of improved demand this summer. Brent futures for August settlement were down 43 cents at $85.58 a barrel. U.S. crude futures also dipped by 43 cents to $81.20. The Sri Lankan rupee remains steady against the US dollar at commercial banks in Sri Lanka today compared to yesterday. Accordingly, the People's Bank, the buying and selling rates of the US dollar have dropped from 299 rupees and 64 cents to 299 rupees and 59 cents and from 309 rupees and 79 cents to 309 rupees and 73 cents respectively. At commercial bank, the buying rate of the US dollar remains unchanged at 298 rupees and 82 cents while the selling rate is 309 rupees. Now let's observe how the rupee behaved against other global currencies. A short commercial break. This is an Isla Business Report. Welcome back to the Isla Business Report. Cabinet spokesperson Mr. Bandula Gunawardena said Sri Lanka will call competitive bids to select a new operation and maintenance contractor for Ceylon Electricity Board's Thamba Pavahini wind farm. The existing ONM contract with Vesta's Wind Lanka Private Limited for three years has ended in May of this year. 
Minister Gunawardana said therefore a new service provider should be selected for these functions. Accordingly, the cabinet approved the proposal presented by the Minister of Power and Energy to select a suitable service provider following a competitive procurement process. Situated on Mana Island in Sri Lanka's northwest coast, Tambapavani is the country's largest wind farm. Ravi Vijayvanta has been appointed to the board of John Keels PLC as a non-executive director with effect from 1st of July. Vijayvanta joined the John Keels group in September 2003 and was appointed as sector financial controller of the property industry group in July 2006 and chief financial officer of the same industry group in July 2017. He is a member of the group operating committee of the John Keels group and will be taking over additional responsibilities as the chief financial officer of the plantation services sector as well as oversight responsibilities over John Keel's IT and Informate with effect from the first of next month. He has over 25 years of experience in the field of auditing and accounting. Sri Lanka's Brown & Company PLC has sold its subsidiary Brown Fabrics Limited to Ceylon Knit Trend Private Limited. The company said in a stock exchange filing that it has disposed its 100% shareholdings of Brown's Fabric Limited to Ceylon Knit Trend for a total consideration of 50 million rupees. Brown's Fabric Limited operates a knit fabric manufacturing and processing plant in Panala in Kurunagala. The Board of Investment backed state of the art weft knit fabric production facility was established with an investment of $52.3 million to produce fabric for the export oriented apparel industry in Sri Lanka. Shares of Brown and Company, a subsidiary of the LOLC Group, was trading up at 123 rupees. Brown's group is spread across several industry sectors, including power generation, agriculture and plantation, pharmaceuticals, investments, marine and manufacturing, as well as leisure. Knuckles Water, in collaboration with one of the country's largest humanitarian organizations, the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society, has taken decisive action to support communities affected by recent flooding across Sri Lanka. Marking the first step in a broader effort to ensure immediate access to clean drinking water for flood-affected families, Knuckles Water, bottled by Cargill's Food and Beverages Limited, has donated 5-litre Knuckle water bottles to SLRCS Gampaha to aid the relief efforts. Over 1,000 families benefited from the distribution program, which focused on the Bollagala and Gagabadapara GS divisions, with around 600 families from each area receiving aid. Arjuna Kumara Singha, the managing director of Cargill's Food and Beverages Limited, said at Cargill's they believe in extending a helping hand to fellow Sri Lankans in times of need. Their partnership with the Sri Lanka Red Cross Society allows them to make a meaningful contribution to the well-being of those affected by the floods. Knuckles water is bottled at source in surroundings of the Knuckles mountain range. This donation underscores the brand's commitment to providing high-quality products while actively participating in humanitarian efforts. A seven-member delegation led by the Thai Chamber of Commerce and the Board of Trade of Thailand chairman met with the Ceylon Chamber Chairman Duminde Hulangamur along with senior representatives of the Chamber yesterday, accumulating in the renewing of a Memorandum of Understanding to further enhance trade, investment and tourism between Sri Lanka and Thailand. The MOU was signed in the presence of Ambassador Designated to Thailand Vijayavanti Edrisingha and the Sri Lanka Greater Mekong Business Council of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce President. This event marks a renewal of a historic partnership as the Ceylon Chamber's first MOU was originally established with the Board of Trade of Thailand in 1988. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nile Business Report. Welcome back to the Nile Business Report. 
Asian stocks rose today, recovering a measure of recent losses as investors awaited more cues on a potential trade war between China and the West, while upcoming inflation trends were also in focus. China's Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and Shanghai Composite Indices rose 0.1% each, while Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index surged nearly 1%. Japan's Nikkei 225 index rose 0.5%, although losses in heavyweight tech stocks kept the index trading largely rage-bound. But the broader topics index surged 1.4%, boosted by a rebound in economically sensitive stocks. Among other Asian markets, Australia's ASX 200 rose 0.9%, boosted by mining stocks on stronger commodity prices. South Korea's Kospi added 0.4%, with bigger gains being held back by losses in technology stocks. Over in the U.S., the S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended lower on the rotation out of technology stocks, whose outsized gains have led this year's rally. Tech stocks bucking Monday's downward trend were Apple and Meta platforms, both of which rose after a report said the Facebook parent has discussed integrating its generative AI model into Apple's recently announced AI system for iPhones. Technology and consumer discretionary stocks were the lone decliners among the 11 S&P 500 sector indexes. Energy was the top outperformer, gaining more than 2.5%. The biggest event on investors' radar this week is Friday's Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index report, the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge, which is expected to confirm that price increases are cooling. Well, that concludes today's nightly business report. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I'm Sina Maya Dunne. Have a good night.